Welcome to Master Math Series on Financial Literacy for Teenagers. In this series, we're going to try to explain some of the financial principles that you'll need to understand to navigate your world for the rest of your life. When you come to a You Try It problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you have a really good time today. I bet every one of you knows what a credit card is. It's that little piece of plastic your parents carry around with them. They, they can buy about anything with that. And I'm sure you want one someday. But I wonder if you know how it works. I wonder if you know what takes place when you buy something with a credit card. Well, let's go through an example to show you. Let's say you're going to make a $100 purchase. You're the shopper. You go to the merchant who has just what you want and you agree to buy it with the hundred dollars. Now if it's a credit card purchase there's a bank involved and here's how it'll work. You get your hundred dollar item and then you give your credit card to the merchant. Well he doesn't keep the credit card he immediately wires the information to the bank tells the bank that you've purchased a hundred dollars worth of goods. The bank pretty quickly, within a day probably, returns actual cash to the merchant. But he the bank doesn't give the merchant a hundred dollars. The bank has a fee that it charges the merchant for the merchant using your credit card to pay for his goods. That fee might be six percent. If it were six percent, then the bank wouldn't send $100 back to the merchant for the $100 sale. They'd send $94 back to the merchant. Now, soon after that, the bank would send you a statement and say, you spent $100 at this merchant, and we need to be paid for it. So, you'd write a check for $100, and you'd send it to the bank. Well, let's see what's actually happened. You have goods that you wanted to purchase that you obviously thought were worth $100 and you spent $100 for them. So you're, you're pretty much even. You spent $100 and you got $100 worth of goods and services. The merchant sold $100 worth of things to you but only got $94 for it. Now the merchant knew that a certain number of his customers were going to use credit cards so he probably puts a sufficient margin in his prices to cover the cost of credit cards. But nonetheless he only walks away with ninety four dollars. The bank walks away with six dollars because they made a six dollar processing fee for handling that credit card purchase. Now they may make more money because if you don't pay them that hundred dollars on a timely basis then they're going to charge you interest on that and this transaction will be worth more than six dollars to them. Actually the bank makes money on that credit card in a couple of ways. They charge the merchant a transaction fee maybe three and a half percent maybe six percent and so that every time someone uses a credit card the bank makes a little bit of a transaction fee multiplied by millions and millions of uses of credit cards that's a pretty substantial amount of money but the banks got other ways to make um, money on their credit cards they make it from you you may pay an annual fee for that credit card but even if you don't you're going to pay interest on any outstanding balance that you carry beyond the due date. Let's see how that works. Let's say you have a good credit rating and you get a pretty attractive credit card. Your credit card charges 11.99% per year, which equals 0.999167% per month. 0.999167% of what? Well, they charge you 
0.999167% of the average amount of money that you owed them during that month. And they call that the average daily balance. Now let's see how they calculate that. Let's say that this chart represents your activity with the bank over one particular month. And the left-hand column is the day of the month. And the next column is purchases you make that month. And the next column is payments that you make that month. And the last column is your balance. Now on day one, you started owing the bank $265.15. You had a previous balance of two sixty five fifteen, dollars carried over from the month prior to this. Now your daily balance for day two is the same as for day one because you had no purchases and no payments. And that's true down to about day five when you purchase $83.65 worth of goods. And then your balance for that day is $83.65 higher than it was the day before. And it stays at that higher level until you make another payment on the 10th. And then it goes up and it stays at that higher level until you make $113 purchases on the 16th, goes up then, and it stays there until the 23rd when you make another purchase of $268.56, and it goes up again, and it stays there until you make another purchase and goes up, but then on the 26th you make a payment. So on that day, your balance to the bank goes down. And it stays at that level to the end of the month. There's 28 days in this month. Must be February. Now, what they want to do is calculate the average of what you owed them every day that month. And here's a list of what you owed them every single day of that month. So they total up that list of what you owed every day, divide it by the number of days in the month, which in this case is 28, and they come up with an average daily balance of $440.49. On average, during this month, you owed the bank $440.49. So, how do they calculate the interest? Well, they take your average daily balance and multiply it by the monthly interest rate and that determines the interest expense that you need to bear that month for this credit card. Credit cards are great. I've got them. I use them all the time. You're going to want one too. But did you realize that credit cards are much more expensive for some people than for others? That's right. Some people pay a huge amount each year just to carry a credit card around. And others don't spend anything for that privilege. What's the difference? Well, there's a couple of things that you can control pretty well. The first is don't carry a balance month after month after month. Try as hard as you can to pay off your balance at the end of each month. If you do that, then you have no interest expense associated with that card. And in fact, the banks letting you use their money for a part of a month for free. They're saying, use our money for free for a while. That's okay. We like you. And as long as you pay it off at the end of the month, there's no charge. The other thing you can do to impact your, the expense of having a credit card is to have a good credit score. A credit score is a score that a consumer has based on their credit history. There are credit rating agencies who track the behavior of people with credit. They keep track of how quickly you pay your bills, how much credit you've got, and so forth, and then they give a score to that consumer based on their performance with their credit. Those scores range from 300 to 850. The lower end of that range, 300 to maybe 650 or 625, is considered poor credit. The top end of the range from 750 to 850 is considered excellent credit. The median credit score is about 725. That means that half of the population has a credit score below 725 and half the population has a credit score above 725. 
Now, specifically, how do they determine a credit score? Well, I can't tell you specifically how they do it. It's a complicated matrix. But I can tell you this. There are certain factors that they look at and give credit to when they're determining your credit score. The most important factor is your history of on-time payments. If you pay your bills each month on time, that's going to really benefit you in terms of your credit score. If you don't pay your bills on time, then your credit score is going to suffer. Capacity used. What's that mean? Well, capacity used means are you using all of your credit or do you have lots of credit in reserve that you're not using? If you've got lots of credit you're not using, the credit rating agencies think you're a responsible debtor. You're not using every bit of credit you got, so you're, you, you're being sensible. And they're going to give you a higher credit score. The length of your credit history, that'll also impact your credit score. If you've been paying your bills on time for years and years and years, the credit rating agencies are going to figure you'll continue to pay your bills on time. If you're just starting to get credit, you don't have enough uh, history to make that credit rating agency feel comfortable with you. So they're going to downscore your credit rating a little bit. The type of credit used will also impact your credit score. If you're using crazy, expensive credit cards, then your credit score is going to suffer a little bit. And your past credit applications will also impact your credit. If you're applying for credit every month, the credit rating agencies are going to think, you're crazy. You're applying for way too much credit. You're a higher risk. Well, a credit score. It's just a number. What's it mean? Well, it means dollars to you. It means very big differences in what you'll pay for credit. For instance, on a $10,000 auto loan, if your score on a credit score was between 500 and 589, you might pay an annual percentage rate of as high as 17.4% for that car. But if you had great credit between 720 and 850, you might pay an annual percentage rate as low as 3.7%. If this was a $10,000 auto loan, the difference in dollars is pretty significant. If you've got great credit, you're paying $183 a month for that car. If you've got poor credit, you're paying $251 for exactly the same car. Try to solve this problem. Hit your pause button, get a solution, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. This problem is trying to determine if you understand how to use a uh, check register. In this situation, your previous balance, or the amount of money that you owed on your credit card at the beginning of the month that you hadn't paid off the previous month, was $425. At some point during the month, you made a payment to the credit card company of $350. But during the month, you made some purchases, and they totaled $300. Your average daily balance was $400. The interest rate expense on this card is 18%, which means 18% per year. What is your balance at the end of the month? Well, we've got most of the cash figures that we need to determine this, but we don't know what your interest expense is. We just know that you pay 18% on your average daily balance. Your average daily balance was $400. So to calculate the interest expense for the month, it would be $400 times that 18% or the decimal point one eight divided by 12, which equals $6. So now you got all the information you need to calculate what your balance was at the end of the month. That would be your starting balance of $425 minus your payments of $350 plus your new purchases of $300, plus your interest expense, for a new balance of $381. 
you purchase a sweater with a credit card. The sweater cost $72, plus you had to pay 6% sales tax on it. The credit card company charges its merchants 3.5% of a transaction's value. Can you determine how much money the credit card company made on this transaction? Well, it's pretty easy. The value of the transaction was the $72 that the sweater cost times 1.06, which is adding 6% sales tax to $72. And then if we multiply that times 0.035, or 3.5%, we'll come up with a transaction fee for the credit card company of $2.67. Well, credit cards will probably be a part of your life for your entire life. And I hope you've learned a little bit that will help you deal with them effectively. Now let's test how much you learn. Go to www.mastermath.info where you'll find worksheets, quizzes, and exams on credit cards. Try your luck there. And be sure you come back and see us again soon.